first off, I want to apologize for missing last week's video. You guys know I do everything in my power to post a video once a week. So if you haven't subscribed yet or you're not have your notification bell marked or whatever they call that, go ahead and kiss, you know, just just hit those buttons. Um, in all actuality, I do apologize. It's been months. I don't know how long, guys, four or five months, whatever it is. It just so happens that uh, that's the busy time for me with work. So I just simply don't have the time to post videos every week. Um, as most of you guys know, YouTube is not my actual job. I do this as a hobby and to progress the hobby um, as much as I can, you know, wherever I think I have input to help. Um, that's really why I post videos. So, um, yeah, today's video may not be the most exciting as far as, you know, frogs or vivariums or plants or anything like that, but it is basically the skeleton of a frog room or a animal room, however you want to look at it. It's actually one of my favorite parts is designing the room. And you guys know I designed this frog room. If you haven't seen it, uh, yeah, I've got previous uh, frog room tours for you guys who haven't seen before, so um, I'll link them somewhere up, you know, in the video. But, um, so yeah, today's video is actually about racking system. Um, I've, you know, in the past I've used you know, wire cookie or baker racks from Target. And the way I currently have my room set up, it's two rows of tanks. And, um, which is really great for viewing purposes, um, but not so great for space. You know, I definitely have room on the bottom and I have room up top. I'm six foot three, um, so I can see up pretty high and I could definitely do another row. So today we are going to be going over the custom racks. Um, they're made out of aluminum square tubing and they come in anodized black or they come in anodized silver. Uh, I chose the black because I just think it's going to be an overall cleaner look. You know, I, I first saw these racks, a lot of the Europeans use them, and they just look super sharp, super neat, clean, and tidy. And I kind of have tried to emulate that as much as I could with the racks from Target by making little light shields and whatnot. So in pictures and in videos, it looks fine. Um, you can't really tell. It looks clean, neat, and tidy. But in person, it's kind of sloppy and kind of messy, and it's just not a good permanent fix. Um, you know, the material I use for the light shield's flimsy, and it flaps with, you know, if I've got fans running, it can kind of flap, and they get dusty, and they're hard to vacuum because the fabric wants to stick to the vacuum cleaner, um, where this style rack that I'm going to be building it's got its own slot for light shields and you actually put like a hard ABS black plastic or whatever color you want to do. I'm doing black ABS plastic that fits in the slot um, and blocks all the light. I'm going to show you guys how to build it today. Now, the stuff, the rack that I'm doing first, this is just a starter rack and you can kind you can connect them all together basically um, like for each wall. And so this first wall I'm going to be doing is going to have 12 22 by 17 by 24 vivariums and this rack that I'm building today to show you guys is actually just the first half of that rack so this the rack that I'm building today you're going to see is going to have it, it can hold six six tanks this actual rack is going to have the uh, nylon connectors they're these really hard plastic nylon connectors um, that I got from Esto connectors that's E-S-T-O I'll have a little picture somewhere here. Um, that's where I got the tubing and the connectors. And some of my European friends were mentioning to me that it would be better if I used the steel core connectors. Uh, un unfortunately, I couldn't find any from Esto. So this rack was built with the uh, hard plastic nylon connectors. They are really sturdy. I'm not really worried about the tanks falling or anything, but I heard it makes the entire rack way more rigid when you use the steel core connectors. So I did purchase a few of them. Um, these are two examples. This is a steel core connector. This is a steel core connector. Um, they are much bigger and much heavier. The regular connector comes to about here, I'd say, um, and they're way lighter weight. So these are heavier duty. So I picked up some of these. Um, I do plan on building the continuing, the continuing rack to this um, with those 
steel core connectors. And just to show you guys, this is what the tubing is. Um, it's just square tubing, um, square aluminum tubing. And this is, I got the anodized black, like I said. Um, these, I got one of these from Zorro and one of these from Easy Tube. Those are the two places I tried. Now, speaking on price, that is one of the things that these racks are uh, a hefty penny. And that's kind of what's kept me from doing one of these racks for so long because they do cost so much. Um, and my collection wasn't quite where I wanted it. I knew there was a lot of expensive frogs that I wanted to add to the collection and I had tanks to build. So I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on the racks at that point. I wanted to get the frogs and the tanks first. Um, and then after I got all that done, I figured now it's time to nitpick the room and really do it the right way and the way I want to do it. So, um, the rack for that six foot or the four foot rack that holds six 22 by 17 by 24s, um, with the nylon connectors right around $500. So this is kind of something if you're looking to get your frog room looking super nice, super clean, um, it's probably worth it to do this. Okay, but um, I've rambled on for way too long in this intro. So um, yeah, let's just, let's get into the video. All right, so to start things off with the materials needed to complete one of these racks, you're gonna need nine pieces of square tubing that measures 24 and a quarter inches, nine pieces of square tubing that measures 28 and a quarter inches, 10 pieces that measure 22 and a half inches, 12 pieces that measure 15 inches, and nine pieces of three inch tubing, and six pieces of four inch tubing. That's all for the regular one inch square tubing you'll need. Now, you're gonna need some one inch square tubing with a double flange. These flanges are what hold the light shield in place, and you're gonna need 12 pieces that measures 22 and a half inches. That's all for the actual framing of the rack. Now we're gonna move on to the connectors. You should note that I plan on making multiple of these rack walls connect together. So if you're building a standalone tank, you won't need as many of the five-way connectors that I'm gonna be using. So just keep note of that. And since I'm gonna be adding a duplicate of this rack for one of the walls, which will hold 12 22 by 17 by 24 inch tanks, you're gonna need 18 five-way connectors, six four-way edge connectors that will run along the top edge, and nine four-way cross connectors. Okay, now it's time to build this thing. I forgot to mention you're gonna need a rubber mallet and I'm starting out with the base of the rack. So I grab the four inch tube and a five way connector. You're simply gonna place whatever end of the four sided cross into the tube so that the Esto connector logo is right side up and hammer it into place. Now these things fit really snug so you do have to pound pretty hard. Uh, so I did use a little silicone pad in between the desk and the tube. Once that's complete, now you're gonna take a 22 and a half inch square tube and place it on the left or right side, whichever way you want your rack to go. And you're gonna to wanna to repeat step one two more times. Only this time, connect it to the opposite side of the first side you connected it to. Then you're gonna connect all three pieces together. So basically, you now have three five-way connectors being connected to, a, to two 22 and a half inch tubes. Now what we wanna do is flip those pieces over and we're gonna grab our 15 inch piece and we're gonna connect all of them to the three connectors so they're standing upright. Now we basically wanna repeat the early steps that we created with the front of the frame and we're just creating the rear portion of the frame using the three T's or I guess the three five-way connectors with three four inch pieces on the bottom and you are connecting the 22 and a half inch pieces between them, connecting them, which will basically mirror the front of the frame like we did earlier. And now you're just taking the 15 inch tubes and connecting them, you know, making it all one rectangular rigid unit.
So since this is the first rack I've built like this, I wanted to make sure that my measurements were gonna work. So it's always safe to do a little double check on the measurement and we're good. So now we're gonna be essentially building the first row and I'm working on the backside first. So I'll be using three of the 28 and a quarter inch long pieces for the back and three of the 24 and a quarter inch pieces for the front. Now, the reason that the front and back aren't the same length for the height is because of the spacers on the front side for the light shield. I made my spacers three inches and you have to allow for one more inch for the thickness of the bottom tube of the light shield. I guess you'll see when I get to that part, which is coming up next. Hold it. So for the light shield itself, you're gonna be using the four-way cross connector and the 22 and a half inch double flange pieces and also the three inch tubes. And just an FYI, the flanges aren't placed directly in the center. So you're just gonna wanna make sure that the flange pieces are lined up either more toward the front or more toward the back, whichever you decide to choose. Uh, personally, I chose the front for uh, more of a flush look. Now you're basically just connecting these 22 and a half inch pieces to the, the cross. And then you're just adding the three inch piece to the same side of the tube that the double flange is on. And now we're building the top portion of the light shield. So again, you're gonna need some 22 and a half inch double flange pieces and three five-way connectors. Um, you don't, don't use the five-way connectors on the bottom light shield because it's not structural. So on this one, you're just pounding the five ways into the 22 and a half inch double flange and you're going to use the three inch spacers in between and just basically put it all together and then we're through the next step which is basically finishing off the front edge of the rack so now all we have to do is connect the light shield to the actual mainframe and basically the entire first row is complete. Um, you're gonna wanna put the light shield piece on top of the front 24 and a half inch pieces. And uh, yeah, you can kind of see what we've got going on here. Now we're gonna take three 15 inch tubes and three five-way connectors. And then we're also gonna grab two of the 22 and a half inch tubes. And this will basically complete the first row of the rack. Um, so what I did was take the five-way connector and put it into one end of the 22 and a half inch tube. And then basically I'm just visualizing it. So I took the 15 and a half inch tube and put it on the, I guess to make a perfect right angle, the other side of the connector and pound that into place. And then the next step, we're gonna add another 22 and a half inch piece on top of the other end of the five-way connector, pound that into place, and you're just gonna take two more of those 15 inch pieces and basically pound them into the two five-way connectors. And now you're just putting it together. So this completes the first row and start of the second row of the rack. Um, very simple to build and it, it does look super clean and there's no bowing and you actually have legitimate light shield you can get for this, which I will be showing you in this video, um, what I use and how to do it. And uh, yeah, now, now I will say you're, you're gonna basically follow the steps for, I'm doing three rows, so I'm doing a second row and a third row. So you just follow the steps and then when you get to the very top rim, uh, that's where you're using the four-way edge connector. It's just a little different than the four-way cross and uh, it really finishes off the rack and uh, that's it, you're done. So for the light shield, you're gonna need some black ABS plastic sheets, a ruler, a pencil, and some scissors. Just measure them to fit in between the double flanges cut them to size and install them. And here I'm just showing you how easily the scissors cut through this plastic. And here's what they look like after they're installed. Super clean and you just slide them to the left or the right if you need to access the lights or misting nozzles. And this is how the tank looks after it's installed in one of the slots. 
And finally, this is how your rack should look after you've completed all three of the rows. Super, super clean. Just imagine when all the tanks are in there and yeah, it'll look really cool. All right, friendos, that's gonna conclude this first installment of the new custom racks. I have seven more of these to build and nine more tanks for the room. And I do plan on keeping you guys in the loop, so to speak, with the progress as I add racks and add tanks even if the videos are just boring little five minute vlogs or whatnot. So there should be some pretty cool uploads to come in 2022. I hope you guys are as excited as I am for what's to come in the frog room next year. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. Also, follow me on Instagram at Ufraga Histrionica if you wanna see some pretty cool pictures of my frogs. Lastly, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday and stay safe out there. Goldberg, 